next we have closing words by our women's division national leader, Linda Johnson. moment so we can still have hope. And his answer was, we must 
have a clear image of victory in our life. He said, the important thing is what kind of future image do you have in your heart? You know, what is your future image for yourself, for your life? He said, of course, if you think it's impossible, it will be. If you think I can't do this, you won't be able to. Right? He says, on the contrary, it is important to create a clear, hopeful image for your future. He said, one that you ingrain in the subconscious of your mind. He said, if necessary, keep saying it to yourself over and over. Write it down over and over on a piece of paper. He said, you've got to ingrain that vision for your life, for your future, that victory into your life. He said, you should even think, you know, rather than think, oh, someday. He <laughs> said, instead, you should have the resolve, I am going to make this happen. He said, you can even go so far as to say, I will make this happen by January 31st, 2011. Right? This, you know, this is the encouragement that he said. He says, it is important to have the determination in your heart that no matter what happens, I can accomplish this. And listen to this. This is critical. It is when your hope turns into conviction <laughs> that what you are chanting for will absolutely happen. When your hope transforms into conviction. And so, there is the human revolution. <coughs> and I think we need to talk about human revolution more. And we need to want to do our human revolution. <laughs> it shouldn't be something that we're scared of. Right? Many people are scared to chant to do their human revolution. <laughs> and without human revolution, we can't possibly change our life. You know, human revolution is, I want to change. And so it starts with changing myself. I mean, that is it at its core. So I want to share with you then an experience that Mrs. Morimoto shared with me. And she shared how in June of this, of last year, I'm sorry, of 2010, she met a mother who came to her for encouragement because she was so distraught. And she was distraught because her son had been diagnosed with throat cancer. And the doctors had told her that his cancer required surgery. But after the surgery, the son would never be able to eat again through his mouth. Right? And so, as a result of this encouragement, this mother decided, no way. I refuse to accept that this is the destiny of my son. I refuse to accept that. More than that, she determined, I will take total responsibility. This isn't just my son's karma, it's my karma. I will take total responsibility for this. And she determined that her son would be cancer free in 30 days. <laughs> she then, mom, now let me go back. The son did get medical treatment. He started radiation and was on some other medicine. So he did start getting medical treatment. She just refused that surgery, okay? So then mom, after she makes this determination, because this is cause and effect, right? She got up at 4 a.m. every morning, and she chanted six hours every day. Wow. And she introduced anybody she met to Buddhism <laughs> every single day. So she was really exerting herself. And it's not just the six hours a day. It was she was taking total responsibility that like with every daimoku, she was sending it like a missile to her son to destroy the cancer in his body, right? He was declared cancer free in 28 days. I shared this experience in the meeting that I did here at 10 a.m. and somebody told me after the meeting that a couple right next to her said, 
I don't believe that. <laughs> and so if any of you said that right now, I want to talk to you. <laughs> because, in truth, you don't know the power of Nam Yo Ho Rai Kelly. And I'm serious about that. I really think that 2011 needs to be the year when all of us learn the power of Nam Yo Ho Rai theory, or I have too many people say to me, I, I kind of get it intellectually. I'm like, well, what's that? <laughs> you know, because Buddhism is literally about practice, right? Putting it into action. And so President Ikeda, and I believe it was in his lecture in Letter to the Brothers, although I'm not positive about that, um, he talks about the difference between a mere believer and a practitioner. Right? I think that it's not enough to just believe in Nietzsche's Buddhism or the theories behind Nietzsche's Buddhism or the concepts. We must become practitioners. If we don't transform ourselves into literally putting it into practice, then it's no more than idealism. <coughs> and while Buddhist theory is profound, theory alone will never change our life. <coughs> I think that is true all the time. So, you know, I know that there are so many experiences that people have had. But what I want to talk about is, you know, this kind of attitude uh, of not just praying, but how we pray. We've heard over and over, Nitra Dashonin says, the heart is most important. Many people misunderstand that. They, they interpret the word heart to mean emotional heart. It does not. Heart means each and in determination. One's determination is most important. If you, I want to support Mike. My dear friends in America, if you read in there a speech entitled, Our Attitude Changes Everything, let me just read a little excerpt from this. And this is from Daisaku Ikeda, our mentor. <laughs> the potential of the human brain remains an unknown. We do not know what power it holds. But one thing is certain. The power of belief, the power of thought, will move reality in the direction of what we believe and how we conceive it. If you really believe you can do something, you can. That is a fact. When you clearly envision a victorious outcome, engrave it in your heart and are firmly convinced that you will attain it, your brain makes every effort to realize the mental image you have created. Then, through your unceasing efforts, that victory is finally made a reality. So in this Buddhism, and particularly for those who just received the Gohansen today, but not just for them, for all of us, I think that I want to challenge, including myself, all of us again to take our faith to another level. And what I mean by that is that we have got to get what Buddhism teaches us, and that is the interconnectedness of all things. So hard to get because our eyes verify the separation all the time. And so, you know, it, it is our application comes when you are troubled by your husband, something that's going on in his life, or your wife, or your partner, or your classmate, or it's that person that you're like, will they ever change? <laughs> Every time I talk to her, it's the same sad story. I'm so sick and tired of hearing this story. We all have people like that in our life, don't we? It's like, I'm helping her. I, you know, I, I give her the encouragement as much as I can, and just nothing ever changes. And You know, it could be our boss. It could be your classmate. We need to become like that mother. We need to understand Buddhism teaches us 
You know, if it is happening to us, it is not a coincidence. It is connected to us on a causal level. Right? And so Buddhism says the reason we're here right now experiencing whatever it is we're experiencing is because it is our mission and our mission alone to find the solution to the problem. And the solution to the problem is never, ever, 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 ever waiting for that other person to change. <laughs> because every time we wait for the other person to change, we have missed our own opportunity to do our own human revolution. You know, the greatness about this Buddhism is that it gives us the key to our own self-empowerment. At its core, Buddhism says, my ability, your ability to change our life right now, this instant, this present moment, has absolutely nothing, nothing to do with anyone or anything outside of us. It has 100% to do with us. You know? And so therefore, I think that we need to start looking at life through what I call the eyes of the Buddha. And this is why we need to study. We need to study every day. I don't care if it's only five minutes. And the reason we need to study is we need to reorient our life every day back to Nietzsche's Buddhism. Right? So that we can continue to start viewing things through Nietzsche's Buddhism, not Linda's Buddhism, not Bill's Buddhism, not Cheryl's Buddhism. Because my experience is, without study, we all create our own brand of Buddhism, which is not very effective. <laughs> right? And so, you know, it's not that it doesn't require effort. It does. It's just like that mother's example again. If we want great result, we must be willing to make great effort. It's cause and effect. I think we all need to chant more. And I'm serious about that. And I'm not saying you've got to chant six hours a day. But I do think, you know, President Ikeda has continually said, prayer is the shortest route to accomplishing anything. He said, prayer is your strength. Prayer is your power. It may seem like it's the longest way around, it's the shortest route to accomplishing anything, right? And so the other point that I wanna make is that not only should we have this clear vision of victory that we ingrain in our lives and then start chanting seriously like that mother, taking responsibility to create it, but to understand, as Nietzsche explains, all life at every moment has both this fundamental enlightenment and fundamental darkness that coexist. Because of the coexistence of fundamental darkness, our battle every day then is with the fundamental darkness. No matter what goals we ever set, the greatest obstacle we ever encounter is us, specifically the negative side of us. And so therefore, you know, hitting the deadlock that I started with that President Nikita is talking about, you know, it's always, it manifests in these ways we never expect. But it's always manifest as doubt or fear or all of these things that this will not be able to happen. And I think one of the things that President Nikita said was when our hope transforms into conviction, our prayer will be realized, right? Because there's no separation between ourselves and, and our environment. I've experienced this over and over, I'm sure you have too. I can start having doubt and fear, but when I chant enough and keep making causes over and over, until I get to the place where I have banished the fear and I'm like, no, it's happening. That is like the only option in my life, and I mean it. I automatically have my breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So that's our human revolution. Our human revolution is to win over ourselves. And so for those who just receive a Gohansan, we don't get rid of our weaknesses because we chant. We chant to never be defeated by our weaknesses. 
Do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not that we don't, over a period of time, overcome the weaknesses, but they don't go away overnight. It's a constant battle. But what we learn through Nietzsche's Buddhism is when we challenge the weakness with nam myoho renge kyo it then becomes the catalyst that causes more and more of our unlimited potential that has always been inside of us to come out. But it won't come out unless you challenge something. It won't come out on its own. It's just like your muscle potential. Every one of us, just as we are right now, no matter how buff or unbuff we might be, <laughs> at this particular moment can develop our muscles more. But think about it. Even though you know that's true, you can't will that potential out of your body. I would have done it a long time ago. <laughs> right? we, we, can't do, we know it's there, but we can't will it out. Instead, we need some catalyst to bring it out. Right? And so it's like we know that like weight resistance training is like one of the most effective ways. The weight's outside. But when we resist it, it's the catalyst that then releases all of this potential that has always been inside of our muscle. Nietzsche's Buddhism teaches us life is the same way. Problems, obstacles, negativity are the ways of life. That when we resist it, challenge it, head on with nam myo ho renge kyo, it becomes the catalyst that releases, just like our muscle potential, this incredible, inexhaustible supply of everything from within our own life. As President Ikeda says, we do not attain enlightenment. We do not attain Buddhahood. Instead, we manifest it from within. It's already there. It's already there. We just need to call it out, you see? And so the crucial moment then is when we set the goal and when the fear comes up and it's like, I don't know if I can do this, or the doubt, or the whatever that comes out that convinces us, that's the crucial moment when we must do our human revolution. That's when we've got to stay the course. One more thing I want to say in conclusion. In one of the Go shows, Nietzsche says, he says that basically he's been fighting, you know, devilish forces and everything so strenuously and consistently. He says that, you know, there are eight kinds of suffering. And normally, only, you only get hit with one of them at a time. He said, but I've been fighting devilish functions so strenuously, all eight have descended upon me at once. That's what he says. But I want you to understand something. That's our equivalent in the Gokkai and Gokkai vernacular when we say, oh, my karma's coming out. <laughs> so when you make a determination, often you will experience lots of stuff just erupting out of your life. Nietzsche in that Go show explains that's not something to fear. The reason it's all coming out is so that you can now, you are now changing a huge chunk of your karma all at one time. That is the power of Nam Yoho Renge. So when all of this stuff is coming out, now it's important to understand you're cleaning it out. You're getting rid of this karma. Don't, don't turn around. Don't run. You must stay the course. You must stay the course. And then you will get that amazing result. I think both experiences today were excellent. And, and both of them really demonstrated that spirit, right? It's the never give up spirit, right? So I think that all of us, you know, in dealing, when I started talking about not just looking at the other people in our life as separate from us, I want us to become like that mother. I'm going to take responsibility that my husband has a breakthrough. I'm going to take responsibility that my member has a breakthrough. Do you know what I mean? I'm, that my boss has a breakthrough. You know, because if it is affecting us, we need 
to learn anything that affects us, we can change. This is the meaning of the interconnectedness of all things. So in conclusion, you know, I think that it's so important that this year, in 2011, we decide to really learn the power of Nomyoko Renge Kelly. And in order to do that, we must become great practitioners. You know, people who practice, meaning chanting, consistent morning and evening gongyo, abundant Namyo Ho Renge Kyo every day to keep a high life condition. It means using our life to also, you know, help others, right? So it's practice for oneself and others. That is the key to this Buddhism, right? It's taking every problem as the reason that's happening is so that I can learn more about the power of Namyo Ho Renge Kyo in my life. I'm going to take it that way. It's happening so I can learn the power of my life to affect my environment. We're in a laboratory of life, learning what it takes to be a winner. My prayer for each of you is that you are the producer, the director, and the screenwriter of the movie called Your Life. Please write that script to make it exceed your wildest expectations. Thank you.